We're starting our coverage here at the IPMI conference in San Antonio. And my first guest is Jonathan Butler. He's the strategist for precious metals over at Mitsubishi. Jonathan, good to be back with you. Good to see you too, Daniela. Good morning. So, Jonathan, you're a speaker here at the conference, and I know in, in previous interviews uh, you've said that you're eyeing gold to stay within this 1180, 1190 range, and that's what I want to talk to you a little bit about today, especially with two key events coming up, the Fed and this Greek decision weighing over on us. What are you seeing for gold? Well, in terms of the Greece situation, uh, we haven't really seen any level of safe haven buying. Uh, gold is, has in fact fallen, uh, even as the talks have, uh, have fallen apart seemingly. Um, there could be some safe haven support in the short term from Greece, but uh, we believe that ultimately the ECB will come to some agreement, uh, essentially kick the can down the road and, uh, and the market will move on. Um, I think it's rather more interesting what the prospects are for gold uh, potentially in a higher interest rate world, and we'll hear from the Fed uh, later, or, or later this week on, on what their uh, expectations are. Uh, we're not expecting any, any major changes. We're still viewing September or even October uh, as being the time of the first interest rate rise. And even then, it's going to be a fairly modest 0.25%. Uh, exactly. So let's, let's talk about that. Even if we do see that interest rate hike, what would be the repercussions uh, for gold and silver? Well, I think in the short term, uh, we might see further weakness in gold. Um, it may be more a case of it being priced in ahead of the fact of an interest rate rise. Um, just as we've seen over the past two years, uh, gold is down something like 26% on the uh, April 2013 level when tapering first began to be talked about by the Fed. Um, so. If we see a, str a strengthening of the dollar uh, in anticipation of interest rate rises, then that's probably going to weigh on gold and the precious complex. But once the, uh, once the pricing in has been done and interest rates start eventually to rise, we might see a case of uh, having sold the rumor, <laughs> the, uh, the, the market will sell the fact of... So, Jonathan, what would it really take for us to see a move out of this range, uh, whether on the upside or downside? Well, I think uh, there's, there's the potential that uh, the yield environment may stay fairly favourable towards gold. Um, and even though uh, short-term US Treasury yields have been creeping higher in expectation of interest rate rises and also uh, because of the strengthening of the dollar, uh, I do think that if we are to see inflation pick up over the longer term, then this may offset uh, the, the higher yield environment and keeping the environment fairly favourable for non-interest bearing precious metals investments. Now, finally, uh, Jonathan, I know before we were speaking about the precious metals and which one you think has the best fundamentals right now, and you think it's palladium. Yes, I think the fundamentals for palladium are still extremely strong. We have a supply-demand deficit as, as measured on an annual basis. Uh, there is still, of course, the potential uh, for, for further gains in autocatalyst demand. Uh, we're seeing some, some pretty strong numbers out of China, despite the economic slowdown seemingly there. Uh, also, the US is, is veritably booming in terms of car production. And even in Europe, which is traditionally a diesel market, we're seeing uh, the erosion of the market share of diesel vehicles because uh, of various reasons. Uh, but that's ultimately beneficial to palladium, uh, palladium usage in gasoline vehicles. And finally, just some thoughts on, on silver. It had a good month of May. We saw some strong demand coming out of India. Are you bullish silver? Reasonably bullish uh, over the longer term. Again, we, we see some short-term headwinds uh, in terms of the pricing in of U.S. interest rate rises. Uh, but ultimately, silver is an industrial metal and should benefit from uh, economic improvement that is engendered by higher interest rates and, and, and the U.S. growth story. So ultimately, we're, we're reasonably bullish there. Jonathan, thanks so much for joining us and have a great conference. Thank you very much indeed. And thanks for watching our coverage kicking off here in San Antonio. We'll have more for you in the next few days. You can stay tuned to Kitco.com. Thanks for watching.